Hey there, Calc2 folks, uh, back here with uh, another set of videos where we're going to continue to look at the uh, polar coordinate system, uh, but we're going to go a little further than, than we went last time and uh, consider the calculus uh, that we encounter in the polar coordinate system here. Uh, we're going to look at topics like, uh, well, three topics, slope of polar curves will be our first topic here. I will follow this up with a quick video over uh, area trapped within polar curves, and then lastly finish up with the idea of uh, arc length of the polar curve, right? And we are going to see these ideas relate to uh, past ideas in our study here of calculus. Uh, we just are going to now consider these cases in the context of the uh, polar coordinate system. Now, the first case we consider here is the case for um, the slope of a polar curve, right? Or what we might think of as the slope of the line tangent to a polar curve, which could be generalized to the slope of the curve at a point on the curve, right? Um, and as with parametric curves, the slope of the line tangent to a polar curve can be determined uh, using some very similar methods to, to what we saw back in the case of parametric curves. Uh, the formulation for a, a polar function, right, uh, is presented here in the following theorem in terms of finding the slope of the line uh, tangent to a polar curve. Now, if we look at this theorem, right, this theorem does start off with the assumption that what we have here is this polar function. Uh, we suppose we have a polar curve described by the polar function r equal to f of theta, right? If we were interested in the slope of the line tangent to the polar curve at some specific value of theta, right, at some particular angle measurement in the polar coordinate system, right, that slope right? That slope we understand is the value dy dx, right? The cha instantaneous change in y with respect to the instantaneous change in x, the instantaneous change in rise or vertical change in terms of the instantaneous change in horizontal change, right? x is going to describe our slope and it's given by this calculation here on the right. Where what you can see is up in the numerator I do have the sum of two terms, Right, the first term being the uh, well, the the product of f prime at that specific angle measurement theta null times the sine of theta null being added to our second term, uh, what would be the, the 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 polar function f evaluated at the um, what specific angle measurement theta null times the cosine of that specific angle measurement theta null. Right? And all of that is put over top of this quantity, this difference. Right? This difference of two terms, where in the first term here, we again have the, notice this is the first derivative of our polar function, evaluated at our specific angle measurements, times the cosine of that specific angle measurement, minus our second term, which is now just the product of our polar function at the specific angle measurement theta null times the sine of theta null at that specific angle measurement. And this is all provided that this quantity we have in the denominator, notice that is just the quantity found here in the denominator, that that is not equivalent to zero in value. If that's equivalent to zero in value, um, we might have the case for a vertical tangent at that location, or it might be the case for a cusp or a, a pinch point or, or a corner in our graph where there may not be a definitive slope of the line tangent to the curve there. All right? Now, if we look at an example, right, we might consider the slope of the line tangent to the polar curve given by r equal to 4 cosine theta at the value of r comma theta at the polar coordinate 2 comma pi over 3. All right. If we consider this case, right, our polar function is that function for cosine theta. Here is our polar function. That is the function r equals f of theta here, right? Where we might think of it, if f of theta equals 4 cosine theta, 
That does imply the first derivative of f, which I'm going to need in my calculation up here, is the opposite of 4 sine theta in value. All right. So if I'm at this particular angle measurement, if I'm considering this location where I'm interested in the tangent line, I'm going to be at this particular angle measurement, theta null equal to pi over 3, where f at pi over 3 is going to result in the value of 2, and f prime at pi over 3 is going to result in the value of negative 2 root 3. Right? And this implies, if I consider being at that value of pi over 3, that the slope of the line tangent to my curve right, would then be given by the first derivative of f at that particular value times the sine of that angle measurement pi over 3 plus f at that particular angle measurement pi over 3 which we know is 2 in value times the cosine of our particular angle measurement pi over 3 all divided by the statement now that involves the what uh, f prime at pi over 3 times the cosine of pi over 3 minus f at pi over 3 times the sine of pi over 3. And as above, as we know, cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half, and sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. We can substitute those values also down here into our formulation for the slope, and we get this statement to simplify it to this ratio here, which can go a little further into this ratio here, which would be negative 2 over negative 2 root 3, which in the end simplifies to 1 over the square root of 3. Right? So the slope of the line tangent to this polar curve at this particular coordinate is just given by the value 1 over the square root of 3. If we were to look at the graph, right, we can see an illustration of the value we calculated. Right? The circle here is the illustration of our polar curve. This is the curve for cosine theta. It would form this circle in space. And actually, if you, if you uh, considered this formation of the circle, this circle would actually form in one revolution of the circle occurring in an angle measurement of theta from 0 to pi. Right? Where... If we were at the location 2 comma pi over 3, that's going to put us at this particular location on our polar curve. This is going to be at the location where we form this angle measurement through the origin and that coordinate with an angle measurement of pi over 3, which would be accurate, at a distance now of 2 units away from the origin. Well, you can see here, here measures 2 units, here measures 2 units, right, from the origin. That point certainly would lie on a circle of two units away, right? Uh, if we put a radial arm through that point, it would be two units away from the origin. So that is our location two comma pi over three on this polar curve, where what we have just calculated with one over the square root of three would be the slope of this line tangent to this curve. Now, you can trust that I, this is the, the equation of the, the slope of this tangent line. I did. Uh, put this together by finding the equation of the line tangent to the curve at that location and graph these two within Mathematica. Uh, if we actually consider the rectangular equation for this tangent line, right, it would just be again given by point slope formula as we had found it back in uh, Calculus 1 material. We would take that slope times that location given in its rectangular description. Now, what is that location in its rectangular description? We can come upon these values of 1 and the root 3, right, by noting that x will always be equal to r cosine theta, r being 2, theta being pi over 3, that would be 2 times 1 half or 1, and the y-coordinate here being uh, the value given by r sine of theta. 
So that would be two times the sine of pi over three. Sine of pi over three is root three over two. So it would be two times the root three over two, which would end in just root three. That would be our y coordinate location. If I plug these in to the point slope formula, these three values, the slope and this xy coordinate where this tangent line is occurring, I do obtain this slope intercept form, where if I graph that slope intercept form, it will give me this tangent line. It will give me this line with the slope of 1 over the square root of 3 added to this value 2 divided by the square root of 3. 2 divided by the square root of 3 is about 1.15 in value. And if you take note, that is right where this graph is crossing the y-axis. That's at about 1.15 in value. Right? Uh, each of these ticks happening at a, uh, what, uh, a fifth of, of, of a unit. Right? That's 1.2 at that tick, 1.4, 8, and then 2. Uh, so that's a little less than that at 1.15 in value. All right? Now that is slope of the line tangent to a polar curve. If we were to spend just a moment on proof, all right, I do give you proof here. As I had noted to begin with, this formulation does develop from our understanding of slope of the line tangent to a parametric curve. And if you take note, we know for a parametric curve, the slope of the tangent line, the, the parametric curve x equal to x of t, y equal to y of t, uh, the slope of the tangent line at t, dy dx, is just going to be given by the derivative of y, the derivative of the second parametric equation for y in terms of t over the derivative of x with respect to t over the derivative of this equation in terms of x. Well, for the value of x in terms of t, right? Where in the case of a polar equation, right, or a polar function, right, the relationship, the parametric relationship you might consider existing here between x and y and r and theta can be expressed as this relationship here, where we know that x is equal to r cosine theta and y is equal to this value r sine theta in this relationship. Right? Where if we go just now a little further, notice what this does is this does define x and y in terms of two parameters. The parameters r and theta. Right? What we do need to first do before we apply this idea above is consider rewriting this parametric equation in terms of just one parameter. And the way we do that is by noting then, if we have the polar function r equals f of theta, we can substitute into this set of parametric equations given above that value f of theta for the value of r. So x ends up becoming f of theta times cosine theta, and y ends up becoming f of theta times sine theta, which now illustrates x and y in terms of just one parameter, that being the parameter of theta. Where above what we, we, we know we're going to need to formulate dy dx, we are going to need the derivative of this parametric equation with respect to theta, and we're going to need that divided by then the derivative of x with respect to t or the derivative of this equation with respect to theta, right? And if we take note, those derivatives, right? Here I, I take note that dy dx is really just going to be the derivative of this with respect to theta divided by the derivative of this with respect to theta, where we can take note from product rule, those derivatives are as follows. From product rule, this derivative we find in the numerator here is just the derivative of this statement with respect to theta. And it is a little bit of implicit differentiation. It is going to be the derivative of the first factor times the second. Well, that's f prime of theta times sine of theta added to the first factor 
times the derivative of the second factor, the sine theta. Now the derivative of sine theta is cosine theta. So we have plus f of theta cosine theta. We perform a similar calculation for dx d theta involving f of theta cosine theta. It's the derivative of f, which is f prime, times cosine theta, right? Plus f of theta times the derivative of cosine. Now the derivative of cosine is negative sine theta, so that's where the negative comes into our formulation here. And if we now take these two quantities for dy d theta and dx d theta and form them into this ratio, right? We have the formulation given above in our theorem. dy dx will end up equaling f prime of theta times the sine theta added to f of theta times the cosine theta in the numerator, all divided by f prime of theta cosine theta minus f of theta sine theta found here in the denominator. Notice that is our formulation at any generic value of theta. Right? And all that came from was our, uh, what, parametric description of this, sorry, uh, this polar coordinate relationship between x and y and r and theta. Right? Uh, essentially what we have here is a, a specific case for this parametric relationship understood in general as x equal to x of t, y equal to y of t where x and y are being parameterized in terms of what we end up with here is just the parameter of theta, where I can then apply this result to that parameterization, right? To develop this description of slope of the tangent line, all right? So folks, that is our first, uh, what? case of looking at the uh, calculus that we encounter in the polar coordinate system. Uh, what I have to come back to again is uh, two more videos here. My next one, I'm going to look at uh, the area bounded by polar curves. But I will be back, uh, well that will be uh, its own separate video, so, so uh, check that out. Um, hope you're all doing well, and I'll see you then.